Samples from the maiden voyage of NASA's rodent research project will return to Earth on the SpaceX 5 Dragon. That's scheduled for February 10th. We had the opportunity to visit the lab where those samples will be studied at NASA's Ames Research Center. So there are vials and scales. We're in a lab. Ruth, tell us about it. Well, this is a research lab. This is uh, my lab here at NASA Ames Research Center. And I'm here, I work also as the project scientist for the rodent research project. And this is where the actual samples and tissues come to for analysis, right? That's right. We get the tissues, we uh, process them, and uh, purify uh, components like the RNA, the protein, and then we can take those and do more detailed analysis. Why do we do all of this? Well, because, well, for two big reasons. One is because we want to understand the basic biology of how organisms and mammals and humans respond to the spaceflight environment. Another reason is we want to find ways to uh, improve uh, human health on Earth and mitigate some of the adverse effects of spaceflight on the human crew. So samples from the first flight mm -hmm. are headed back to Earth. What happens to them exactly once they return to Earth? Well, after they're, they're brought to our, our facility, our laboratory, we go in and we remove the tissues uh, and we take them through a series of processing steps to purify RNA. We also take, that's, we'll be doing that with the spleens. With the livers, we'll be uh, lysing tissue from the livers and preparing samples and analyzing it for enzymes and proteins. The tissues, after we've done our initial analysis and essentially proven, uh, demonstrated, that the samples have been recovered and stored and uh, uh, collected and analyzed uh, to that point uh, adequately, then we can provide those samples out to others. So uh, here at Ames and at Johnson Space Center, NASA provides uh, an archive of tissues that can be made available to other scientists to go in and really kind of do a deep dive into gene expression and um, functional analyses. How does this benefit us here on Earth? How does studying the tissues and the samples from these rodents help us? Well, when we understand the underlying mechanism and, and development, pathogenesis of a, of, a, of, a, of a disease or a response to an adverse stimulus, then we can better intervene. So most drug development, um, almost all the drug development now, has gone through phases where testing using rodents or other experimental animals um, is part of that process, process. And that's what needs to happen in order to uh, understand both uh, whether it's beneficial, whether it works, and what the, you know, what the consequences are of, of, of treatment like that. Now, when we understand the basic mechanism, that allows us to really target, can we, can we do something to prevent that through a, through a physical maneuver, through prevention, rather than treating after an adverse effect has developed, such as bone loss or muscle atrophy, which we know occurs in space. So is this lab any different from any lab we'd see on the ground? I mean, is, is there anything different or unique about this lab? Well, my own personal lab uh, research involves looking at, at bone. So we have some special tools that allow us and equipment that allow us to analyze the microarchitecture and the structure as well as the mechanical properties of bone. But this lab has, uh, has all of the basic biochemical and molecular reagents and processing capability that you see with any molecular biology lab you would see an academic in an academic institution, a biotech company, a big pharma company that they use to really uh, develop uh, their tissue analysis capability. And Mark Faust is leading the team here in the Payload Operations Integration Center. They're preparing those samples and many, many other things. They're working with the crew to get all of that on board the Dragon to return to Earth. Before we leave, we wanted to mention that the winners of the Future Engineers 3D Printing and Space Tool Challenge were announced. The winner from the teen group, ages 13 to 19, was a multi-purpose precision maintenance tool that Robert Hillen of Enterprise Alabama designed. And the winner of the junior group, ages 5 to 12, was a space planter that Sidney Vernon from Bellevue, Washington designed. Now this challenge asked students in grades K through 12 to use their imagination to create and submit a digital 3D model of a tool they think astronauts could use in space. And the team winner will be here in the Payload Operations Center to see his winning object tool printed right here.